Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I want to do kind of a quick video leading into Sunday. Um, I'm not going to be around for live. I'm going, I have uh, I have some family issues that I have to attend to. I don't want to get into more details, but I'm back and forth to hospitals the last couple of days. And I'm not going to be around uh, tomorrow for uh, the live before lot. But I did want to at least give you a couple of um, kind of late, kind of, I guess, hot takes, more more. Um, just kind of what I'm doing that might be a little different than what other people are doing. And you can take it for what it's worth. Um, so first of all, I did post uh, updated sheets, um, updated as through tonight. Um, I don't know what's going to happen as far as injuries tomorrow. Um, so obviously this, this is not going to apply if there's a major change in, in some of the lineups. But I want to identify, how do I want to do this? I think I'm going to, Think of it this way. I'm going to talk about chalk I'm playing, chalk I'm fading, and then low on guys that I'm playing. Um, just kind of it'll give me give you my overall take of which plays I think are just kind of I'm going to call bullshit on, and which plays I kind of like, and which plays I think are just gonna are going underappreciated. And what's interesting is that this is kind of you know, the opposite of what I usually do. You know, like I put up my sheets and, you know, they kind of reflect the projections throughout the industry. And that's, that's, that's obviously correct. But these takes are more, you know, F the projections, sort of, you know what I mean? This is like, this is GPPs. I know the median projection is this, but, but I, I just, either I don't believe it or I'm just, you know, I just don't think they're good GPP plays or, or what have you. Uh, the first thing I would like to mention, and this is a, this is something that I have stressed over the last couple of years. Um, I would not play more than 20% of any defense um, in GPPs. Um, and I also would really try to get well under the field on chalk defenses like this, like the Bengals. Um, yes, they're a really good price. You know, they 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 were priced before Dak Prescott, I guess, was out. Um, but getting a defense to come through for you is just not as easy as you think, you know. Narrative-wise, I mean, who's to say that Dallas doesn't just pound the rock now and, and make it really easy for Cooper Rush? You could get Cincinnati winning a game like 20 to 6, and their defense score is like, seven fantasy points, you know, um, if Dallas plays really conservatively. The types of defenses you want to play are ones that are facing a team that's going to really try to air it out. Um, I think that this is probably the wrong matchup to play a chalk defense. Um, so that's the first thing I would say is I'm going to get, come well under the field on the Bengals defense. That, that's That's for openers. Now, I guess we'll talk about uh, about running backs for first. Uh, the chalk that I am playing, uh, when I say I'm playing, that means I'm going to be, you know, significantly either over the field or, or with it. Actually, I would consider myself over the field on on Saquon. Uh, that is that is chalk that I am am not fading. Uh, I've been waiting for him to be healthy for what two or three years now. And he finally is. And this is this key's gonna be 10K within four weeks. So before that happens, I, I want to play him at 7,300. So um uh, targets running, rushing yards, just everything, close game. Uh they're gonna lean on him. And I'm I'm not fading that at 7,300, just not in a million years. So that's uh that's the first thing. I I might get more than I have already. I have like 50% of him 5-0. I might end up with more. Um but yeah, that's that's the first first bit of business. The other um, the other bit of chalk uh, that I am playing, I should say it's actually there's more with the field. I am playing Daryl Henderson, but I'm actually a little bit under the field on him. So I, I guess the only real chalk running backs that I'm playing is is Saquon. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the, the, the truck running back I am not playing. And that's um uh Leonard, and that's Leonard Fournette. Um he's he projects he projects well enough, you know. I, I just I just don't buy it. 
you know, that's the best I can describe it. And he, he could be okay, you know, whatever. But I, I haven't played running backs against the Saints in a while. And I think that, um, I don't know, I just have this feeling that the play doesn't really have a lot of ceiling. So I, I, I don't think I'm going to play Fournette, especially at, uh, well, partially because he's going to be high owned. Um, so I'm going to be with the field on like Gibson and Jacobs and, and maybe Javante Williams. So I want to highlight the three kind of three. No, the two, um, the two plays I'm going to be significantly over on one is going to be Chase Edmonds. Uh, I have him, you know, he's in that same 5k range as, as, as Daryl Henderson. And I think Chase Edmonds is a very good play here. I mean, uh, I'm not going to have, I mean, maybe I'll have 20%, but I, I see him being owned about eight. So I consider that pretty, pretty fair leverage. But I will tell you the, um, the guy I'm going to have the most of, I think, from, from a leverage perspective, relative to the field and, and, and the high ownership and, and low ownership and stuff, is I, I'm going to be getting a whole ton of Cordell Patterson. Um, I don't understand the projection at all. He was under projected all season last year and just smashed on a, on a semi-regular basis. He had got 22 rushing attempts last week. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, when you play Cordell Patterson, you don't even look for that many rushing attempts because you have so much upside from catching it out of the backfield. But if they're going to turn to him for their lead running back too, I mean, you and you have a game where your, your game script is just perfect you know, for, for him to always be involved. And I'm going to be significantly ahead of the field on that. So I guess to summarize chalk, I'm playing and the running back is Barkley. I'm sort of playing Henderson, but, but, but under the field and I'm not playing the Fournette chalk and I am getting way over. I'm getting over on Chase Edmonds and way over on Cordell Patterson. That's, that's where it is. So let's just put these in here. Where's Patterson? Just so that we remember. It's either gonna be the, this is the these are the leverage plays. That might not be the leverage lineup, but it's it's the leverage plays. So and we're and we're not gonna be on the Bengals. Basically, anybody but the Bengals works for me. Um you, you know who you could play as a um you play. You could play real sneaky leverage. You could pay the who's playing the Cowboys at three K. That'll that would be fun, right? I don't know. That's possible, but you could play all these defenses. It just anybody but the Bengals, really. Okay, so let's look at. Should we look at the stacks? Let's let's look at it by position. That's that's probably the better way to do it. So I'll tell you the sort of chalky wide receivers that I'm playing. Okay. Um, I'm going to be significantly ahead of field on, and is this considered leverage? I mean, is this considered chalk 13% ownership? Yeah, I guess so. So, so I will have, uh, I'm on St. Brown. I mean, I loved him last week. I talked about him leading into the season. And I'm going to be well over the field on him, even though he's he's chalky. I'm going to just just get a bunch of it. Um, aside from that, I'm really going to be kind of under on the higher priced. I think on on the higher priced wide receivers. Um, let me just confirm that. Um, hang on. Well, no. I mean, I'm going to have obviously, not obviously, but I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have Devonte Adams, but I think I'm going to be like barely with the field, maybe a little under. I'll have him maybe about twenty percent. I have him about twenty five, thirty percent owned. I'm going to be a little bit under on him. So I guess the, the the wide receiver that I'm going to actually have that's chalky is probably I'm on St. Brown, but I'm going to I'm going to deal with that by just getting way over on that exposure. Um, I'll tell you who I'm not playing. Uh, and this is, I, I really just believe this is what you're supposed to do. 
I'm not playing pretty much any of those guys that kind of came out of nowhere at low ownership last week. Um, so, for example, uh, Curtis Samuel, I'm not playing him. Uh, the guy from uh, Arizona, Dorch, definitely not going to do that. Um, th- 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 those are the plays that work week one that people pound this chalk in week two and fail. I'm just not doing it. And the other one, the other, the other sucker play of the week, I think, is the Richie James play for the Giants. I mean, I don't know. It just seems just so fishy. Um, I do see him. It's not like he's that that chalky. I saw him like nine percent, but a three K guy nine percent. That's some ownership. I, I I think that's just kind of. I just kind of call bullshit on that. But one of those that I'm not calling bullshit on is Jahan Dotson. I mean, I do think that he. Um, I do think that he is uh, that he is legit, but don't uh, don't sleep on McLaurin in that game. So I'm get I'm so I'm not playing the, the kind of uh, of wise guy cheapos from last week that are going to be chalky this week. Here are the guys I'm going to get over on that are going to be under owned. I suppose. Um, let me see. I mean DJ Moore. I'm going to be over the field on him. As I said, I'm going to be uh, over on Jahan Dotson. Let me see. I actually have a decent amount of maybe, eh, not that much of Brandon Ayuk, I was going to say. I don't know. I, I think the DJ Moore, I guess, would be my it's a pretty decent leverage play. I do like Dotson again, again this week. I just mentioned that. St. Brown, Ayuk, maybe. Um, let me look at what some of these wide receivers I have in the flex. That's how I get a little bit confused sometimes. Um, hold on. Flex position. Hmm. I'm really – that's those are the only guys I'm really over on. So, I guess I would say St. Brown – and then I would guess Dotson. Is that how we spell this? Dotson. And who else? I guess that's pretty much it. And DJ Moore, sorry. DJ Moore. Um, okay, tight ends. So the guy that I'm getting, hmm, the guy I'm getting the most leverage to is probably TJ Hawkinson. Yeah, I have him probably three times the field. I have him about 20%. Um, And this is uh, all part of the Detroit Washington business, right? And then I have Tyler Higby probably two times the field. I have him at 20%. But if you want the kind of the hoodoo play, here's a here's a tight end. I don't know if people have talked about him, but I have a full ten percent of him, and I might actually get more. Um, it's uh, Kylan Granson from Indianapolis. He basically out snapped, I think, Mo Ali Cox, especially towards the end of that game. And at twenty six hundred, he's very. Uh, I think he's a very, very strong play that right now I don't see anybody really talking about. Um, who else is going to be high-owned at tight end? I, I mean, he'd be, but I'll get over on him. Mark Andrews is going to be kind of high-owned. I'm going to be under on him. And the rest of the tight ends, I really don't have a strong a strong lean. Um, so it's Hawkinson, Granson, Higby, something like that. Um, now, with respect to quarterbacks, again, it's just going to depend on my, on my stacks or whatever. But like right now, if I had to assign like a leverage score, it's not really particularly earth shattering. It's 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 I'm I'm pretty chalky with respect to my overall stack setups. You know, I have Detroit. <coughs> I presume they're going to be popular. Detroit. Vegas, the Rams, you know, 
Um, those are the main ones. I presume that's what people are going to play, but that's just kind of where I am right now as far as that goes. So Goff, Carr, and Stafford represent, you know, my highest owned, well, that's my highest owned, my highest levered quarterbacks. Um, and I have some Lance, but not a lot. I have some Russell Wilson, but not a lot. It, it really is uh, really heavily, heavily, heavily loaded towards um, Vegas, Detroit, and the Rams. And as you might imagine, those Rams probably have Cordell Patterson as, as a run as a run back, which to me it just makes way too much sense. Um, and as far as defenses, as I talked about them before, and I do have Bengals my highest known, but I do have them capped at twenty percent, so I think that's okay. It's probably going to be with the field, which which I think is all right. My next highest own. It's getting like pretty. I don't know why this is they're showing up so much, but I'll, I'll take a shot at twenty three hundred. That would be the Dolphins. Um, and then next highest leverage team, I guess, is probably the Saints against uh, Brady and them. So, and I got the Jets and the Giants. I mean, defense is rough, you know, as usual. Um, so that that's pretty much all I wanted to go over. And so again, my 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 I guess my big takes for the week is is I don't want to play Kem, uh, Leonard Fournette. I don't want to play those uh, those those wise guy wide receivers like we like not Reese James out, uh, Richie James, Dorch, guys like that. I really prefer not to play that much of the Bengals defense. And, and again, I, I I don't mind eating the Barkley chalk. And the, the the game that continues to show up in, in, in these discussions is this Atlanta, is this Detroit game um, and the Rams and Atlanta and, and, the, and Vegas, you know? So those are my takes for the NFL tomorrow on DraftKings. Uh, as far as FanDuel goes, I may as well pull it up. You know, it's pretty. It's pretty much. It's pretty much the same. You know, I don't. I don't want to play Fournette. You'll probably x him out. Again, you know, don't try this at home, right? I mean, you play 150 and you x out what could be, what could be the best. Uh, which we call it. Which could be the best play. I don't know. I just. I just. I just don't believe it. It's the best. Uh, it's the best I can describe. All right. So again, I'm sorry I'm not gonna be around tomorrow. I believe me, I wish I were. <laughs> uh, but good luck. Uh, hope somebody uh, takes it all down.